Abimelech becomes king. Abimelech son of Jerubbaal, also called Gideon, went to his uncles. They lived in the city of Shechem. He said to his uncles and all of his mother's family group, Ask the leaders of Shechem this question, Is it better for you to be ruled by the seventy sons of Jerubbaal or to be ruled by only one man? Remember, I am your relative. Abimelech's uncles spoke to all the leaders of Shechem. They asked them that question. All the leaders decided to follow Abimelech. They said, He is our brother. So the leaders of Shechem gave Abimelech about one and three fourths pounds of silver. The silver was from the temple of the god Baal of the agreement. Abimelech used the silver to hire some worthless, reckless men. They followed Abimelech wherever he went. Abimelech went to Afra, the hometown of his father. There Abimelech murdered his seventy brothers. They were the sons of Abimelech's father, Gideon. He killed them all on one stone. But Gideon's youngest son, Jotham, hid from Abimelech, and escaped. Then all of the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo came together. They gathered beside the great tree at the stone pillar in Shechem. There they made Abimelech their king. Jotham's Story When Jotham heard this, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim. Jotham shouted to the people, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem. Then God may listen to you. One day the trees decided to appoint a king to rule over them. They said to the olive tree, You be king over us. But the olive tree said, Men and gods are honored by my oil. Should I stop making it just to go and sway over the other trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree answered, Should I stop making my sweet and good fruit? Should I stop just to go and sway over the other trees? Then the tree said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, My wine makes men and gods happy. Should I stop making it just to go and sway over the trees? Then all the trees said to the thorn bush, Come and be our king. But the thorn bush said to the trees, If you really want to appoint me king over you, come and find shelter in my shade. But if you do not want to do this, let fire come out of the thorn bush. Let the fire burn up the cedars of Lebanon. Now, were you completely honest and sincere when you made Abimelech king? Have you been fair to Gideon and his family? Have you treated Gideon as you should? Remember, my father fought for you. He risked his life to save you from the power of the Midianites. But now you have turned against my father's family. You have killed my father's seventy sons on one stone. You have made Abimelech king over the people of Shechem. He is the son of my father's slave girl. You have made Abimelech king just because he is your relative. So then, if you have been honest and sincere to Gideon and his family today, be happy with Abimelech as your king. And may he be happy with you. But if you have not acted right, may fire come out of Abimelech. May that fire completely burn you leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo. Also may fire come out of the leaders of Shechem and burn up Abimelech. Then Jotham ran away. He escaped to the city of Beer. He lived there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. Abimelech fights against Shechem. Abimelech ruled Israel for three years. Then God sent an evil spirit to make trouble between Abimelech and the leaders of Shechem. So the leaders of Shechem turned against him. Abimelech had killed Gideon's seventy sons. They were Abimelech's own brothers. And the leaders of Shechem had helped him kill them. So God sent the evil spirit to punish them. The leaders of Shechem were against Abimelech then. They put men on the hilltops. These men attacked and robbed everyone who went by. Abimelech was told about these attacks. A man named Gal and his brothers moved into Shechem. He was the son of Ebed. The leaders of Shechem decided to trust and follow Gal. The people of Shechem went out to the vineyards to pick grapes. They walked on the grapes to make wine. Then they had a feast in the temple of their god. The people ate and drank and cursed Abimelech. Then Gal son of Ebed said, We are the men of Shechem. Why should we obey Abimelech? Who does he think he is? Isn't Abimelech one of Gideon's sons? Didn't Abimelech make Zebul his officer? We should not obey Abimelech. We should obey the men of Hammer, Shechem's father. Why should we obey Abimelech? If you made me commander of these people, I would get rid of Abimelech. I would say to him, get your army ready and come out to battle. 
Now Zebul was the ruler of Shechem. He heard what Gaal son of Ebed said. And Zebul became very angry. He sent messengers to Abimelech in the city of Aramah. The message said, Gaal son of Ebed and Gaal's brothers have come to Shechem. Gaal is turning the city against you. So now you and your men should get up in the night. Then go lie in the fields outside the city. When the sun comes up in the morning, attack the city. Gaal and his men will come out to fight you. Then do what you can to them. So Abimelech and all his soldiers got up during the night. They went near Shechem and separated into four groups. There they hid. Gaal son of Ebed went out and was standing at the entrance to the city gate. As he was standing there, Abimelech and his soldiers came out of their hiding places. When Gaal saw the soldiers, he said to Zebul, Look! There are people coming down from the mountains. But Zebul said, You are seeing the shadows of the mountains. The shadows just look like people. But again Gaal said, Look, there are people coming down from the center of the land. And there is a group coming from the fortune teller's tree. Zebul said to Gaal, Where is your bragging now? You said, who is Abimelech? Why should we obey him? You made fun of these men. Now go out and fight them. So Gaal led the men of Shechem out to fight Abimelech. Abimelech and his men chased them. Many of Gaal's men were killed before they could get back to the city gate. Then Abimelech stayed at Arimah. Zebul forced Gaal and his brothers to leave Shechem. The next day the people of Shechem went out to the fields. Abimelech was told about it. So he separated his men into three groups. And he hid them in the fields. When he saw the people coming out of the city, he jumped up and attacked them. Abimelech and his group ran to the entrance gate to the city. The other two groups ran out to the people in the fields and killed them. Abimelech and his men fought the city of Shechem all day. They captured it and killed its people. Then Abimelech tore down the city. And he threw salt over the ruins so nothing would ever grow there. The Tower of Shechem The people who lived at the nearby Tower of Shechem heard what had happened to Shechem. So the leaders gathered in the safest room of the Temple of the God Baal of the Agreement. Abimelech heard that all the leaders of the Tower of Shechem had gathered there. So he and all his men went up to Mount Zalman, near Shechem. Abimelech took an axe and cut some branches. Then he put them on his shoulders. He said to all his men with him, Hurry! Do what I have done! So all those men cut branches and followed Abimelech. They piled the branches against the safest room of the temple. Then they set them on fire and burned the people in the room. So all the people who lived at the tower of Shechem also died. There were about one thousand men and women. Abimelech's death. Then Abimelech went to the city of Thebes. He surrounded the city, attacked it and captured it. But inside the city was a strong tower. All the men and women of that city ran to the tower. When they got inside, they locked the door behind them. Then they climbed up to the roof of the tower. Abimelech came to the tower and attacked it. He went up to the door of the tower to set it on fire. As Abimelech came near, a woman dropped a large stone for grinding grain on his head. The stone crushed Abimelech's skull. He quickly called to the officer who carried his armor. He said, take out your sword and kill me. I don't want people to say, a woman killed Abimelech. So the officer stabbed Abimelech, and he died. When the people of Israel saw Abimelech was dead, they all returned home. In that way God punished Abimelech for all the evil he had done. Abimelech had sinned against his own father by killing his seventy brothers. God also punished the men of Shechem for the evil they had done. So the curse Jotham had spoken came true. Jotham was the youngest son of Gideon. Tola, the judge. After Abimelech died, another judge came to save the people of Israel. He was Tola son of Puah. Puah was the son of Dodo. Tola was from the people of Issachar. He lived in the city of Shamir in the mountains of Ephraim. Tola was a judge for Israel for twenty-three years. Then he died and was buried in Shamir. Jahir, the judge. After Tola died, Jahir became judge. He lived in the region of Gilead. He was a judge for Israel for twenty-two years. Jair had thirty sons, who rode thirty donkeys. These thirty sons controlled thirty towns in Gilead. These towns are called the towns of Jair to this day. 
Jair died and was buried in the city of Cayman. The Ammonites trouble Israel. Again the Israelites did what the Lord said was wrong. They worshipped the Baal and Ashtoreth idols. They also worshipped the gods of the peoples of Aram, Sidon, Moab, and Ammon. And they worshipped the gods of the Philistines. The Israelites left the Lord and stopped serving him. So the Lord became angry with them. He allowed the Philistines and the Ammonites to defeat them. In the same year those people destroyed the Israelites who lived east of the Jordan River. This is in the region of Gilead, where the Amorites lived. The Israelites suffered for 18 years. The Ammonites then crossed the Jordan River to fight the people of Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. The Ammonites caused much trouble to the people of Israel. So the Israelites cried out to the Lord, We have sinned against you. We left our God and worshipped the Baal idols. The Lord answered the Israelites, You cried to me when the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, and the Philistines heard you. I saved you from these people. You cried to me when the Sidonians, Amalekites, and Manites heard you. I also saved you from those people. But you have left me. You have worshipped other gods. So I refuse to save you again. You have chosen those gods. So go call to them for help. Let them save you when you are in trouble. But the people of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever you want, but please save us today. Then the Israelites threw away the foreign gods among them. And they worshipped the Lord again. So he felt sorry for them when he saw their suffering. The Ammonite people gathered for war and camped in Gilead. The Israelites gathered and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of the people of Gilead said, Who will lead us to 